Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Where Is video. If you're new to my channel, uh, Where Is is a series where we are focusing on different missing persons cases, trying to raise some awareness about some of these cases, you know, get the names and faces out as much as possible. And today we have another unsolved missing persons case, and that is the case of Aisha Degree. Before we get started with her case, I get to do something really exciting. If you didn't catch my last Where Is video for Kyron Horman, I've started a new project for this series with hopes to raise money for an organization that I'm really passionate about. It's called Thorn. It's actually co-founded by Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore and they are digital defenders of children. Technology can be used to enable slavery but it can also be used to disable slavery and that's what we're doing. So basically what's going on is that in tons and tons of these missing persons cases oftentimes people are sold into sex trafficking. It's the sad reality of it. It's where a lot of these cases most likely end up sadly and since the age of the internet it's become way easier for people who run you know pedophile operations and sex rings and just terrible things it's easier for them to now communicate and send information back and forth you know across the dark web you meet a stranger that has a similar interest to you and next thing you know you're sharing uh content around that particular interest well that might happen with cars and that might happen with uh, hobbies, but it also happens with, with child pornography and human trafficking of underage children. Thorn is trying to pave the way in areas that the government sort of lacks in as far as coming up with new ways to catch people online. The internet is being used for child sexual exploitation and Thorn is the organization that said let's go use technology and innovation to solve this issue. They, you know, bust operations, they rescue children, so it's an amazing organization, really paving the way for the future where I think our government lacks, and, and I'm really excited that we're raising money for them and that my channel was so receptive to it because last month we raised over $1,500 for Thorn. If you didn't catch the last video, this is all being done through t-shirts. I've asked some of my subscribers who are graphic designers to design pieces that they think just fit the channel. They don't have to be certainly anything specific, but it comes in shirts, hoodies, whatever you want. There's like tons of different colors I'll put a link below 100% of what we earn goes to Thorn and I'm gonna be doing this every single where is video so hopefully we can raise a decent amount of money over time so not only do you get a cool shirt um, in fact if you really like this series you can get all of them and collect them all that's what I'm doing but you're also you know contributing to Thorn I'm about to make the donation right now I wanted to do it on camera okay and we're done so thank you guys thank you to everyone who bought a shirt yes there's a new where is campaign for this video it was designed by a subscriber named Amanda and it's kind of a body pop positivity design. It's really cool, really unique. I love that it's just simple and kind of speaks for itself. And hopefully we'll be able to raise a decent amount again and send it off to Thorn so they can keep doing amazing work to defend children. And a huge thank you to Amanda for designing this. But today we are talking about the case of missing Aisha Degree. Aisha's case is really frustrating because there's like just such a lack of evidence. Honestly, this video might end up being kind of short because there's not that much to talk about. And she has been missing for over 17 years now. She actually went missing on Valentine's Day of 2000. And it sucked because her parents, it was actually their anniversary. They got married on Valentine's Day, obviously years before. And Aisha was actually nine years old at the time. And when you hear what she did and how this went down, you're gonna be kind of amazed that she was only nine. I think she would be 26 now. Here's her picture just in case if you see her there's information in the description box to get the information to the right people. This is obviously age progressive. It's not a picture of her, but this is a picture from when she was nine years old from the time that she went missing. So her parents named Harold and Aquila Degree, and they have a son named O'Brien as well. And this all happens in Shelby, North Carolina, the day that it happened. It was a pretty big rainstorm. It knocked out the power for them, in fact. That night, her father, he actually worked a second job and he had late night shifts. So this was really common for him to be working like late hours of the night, odd hours. So he was working until 11.30 that night. Aquila put her kids to sleep, both of the kids, and they actually shared a bedroom. And Aquila says that she put both of the kids to bed around 8 p.m. And about an hour after they went to sleep, the power actually went out for the neighborhood due to a car crash because of the storm that was going on. It was like really pretty heavy rain. So Harold returned from work at around 12 30 a.m. and the power was back on at that point he says that he came in checked on both of the kids saw that they were asleep and when people work 
obviously like odd hour shifts their sleep schedules really messed up so he stayed up that night and just like watched TV and stuff he went to bed around 2 30 thinking the kids are both sleeping in their bed most bizarre thing happened I don't understand this okay so Aisha was only nine years old and that night she had a pre-packed bag so this was sort of premeditated it feels like sometime during the night she uh, gets up and um, packed her regular school bag put clothes in it she uh, walks out of the house and heads down 18 south I don't know how many of you ran away when you were a kid. I ran away when I was a kid, didn't even make it across the street. I remember it happened to be raining when I ran away too and I was like so mad at my mom, but I, I came back after like probably three minutes. <laughs> I had packed a little bag with my clothes and my toothbrush and I'm never coming back. And she, she packed a whole little bag for herself with like outfit changes and everything. And they think she just left her house, like just ran away, which is bizarre. Because what like nine year old gets up in the middle of the night and runs away? And her brother O'Brien actually says that he heard like squeaking in her bed and he just thought she was rolling over so he didn't pay any attention to it but he remembered she must have been getting up and, and getting ready to leave. So Aquila says that she woke up at around 5 45 a.m. and woke up to draw a bath for the kids because they couldn't the night before without the power so she had to get them up and have them take a bath before their day. She obviously went into their room and noticed that O'Brien was the only one there and Aisha was just gone. So obviously as a mother, you're gonna just panic when your kid is not in their bed. You think they're there and they're not there. That's like a horrifying situation. I feel so badly for her mother. I, I can't even imagine the panic. And they were like pretty solid parents. Like they they were really protective of them, knew where they were. The kids were well behaved, well disciplined, not in like a bad way, but they were sort of almost sheltered. They didn't even have a TV in their house. They said that they really tried to make sure that their whole life was church, family, and friends. And that's pretty much what it was. And keep in mind, this is on Valentine's Day and her wedding anniversary so not a great way to spend your wedding anniversary right it's a pretty horrible thing to wake up to so she obviously ran to Harold and he thought maybe she went to his mother's house across the street but when they called her sister-in-law said that she wasn't there and that's when the panic set in um, she freaked out called the police the police arrived there around 6 40 a.m. onto the scene and Aquila was running around the neighborhood the whole family they had tons of family friends and neighbors um, stop whatever they were doing that day and join in to search for Asia with them. They obviously didn't find her that day and after the report of what happened had aired on TV they got a few calls. Two drivers said that they saw Asia walking down Highway 180. They said around 4 a.m. in the pouring rain. This was like a huge downpour. This little girl she's just walking on the side of the highway in the middle of the night with a backpack and they said that she was wearing a long white t-shirt with white pants. Several people say that they see her but no one stops to make sure she's okay. It's really bizarre because no one bothered to call the police and multiple people saw her. One driver in fact actually circled around a few times and he says that when he came up to her she got spooked or freaked out which maybe she thought he was a kidnapper or something like that and she took off into the woods according to him and he didn't call police. No one called police. She runs off into the woods and no one has seen her since. People thought that this must have been a premeditated runaway because she had a packed bag. But it's odd for a nine year old girl to just run away in the middle of the night at four in the morning in the torrential rain. I mean, it's kind of bizarre, right? There was really no reason for Aisha to run away. Like she was happy, she had a great family, great friends. She was a really smart kid in school, like got good grades and she was actually on a basketball team. And this kind of leads into the, the first theory, I guess, of what could have happened. She actually had a basketball game a few days prior and it was like the first game of the season she was super excited and they lost and she and some of the other players were actually so upset after this basketball game they were crying and so some people think maybe she was so upset about the game that she decided to run away and I don't know that just doesn't sit well with me I don't understand why a little girl would get that upset about a game from a couple days ago like most kids it's like out of their mind at that point that she would run away from home at 4 a.m. like in the middle of the night it's so bizarre I do have to say a lot of this case has been held like pretty secretive like the police haven't released a ton of useful information as far as like DNA tests just you know more evidence and stuff I think it's been kept a little bit secret. No one seems to think that she was abducted, which is, I don't know, I believe it's kind of odd because that seems more likely to me or someone, maybe someone she knew like lured her out of her house, like maybe a family friend or something like came in and was like, hey, I got it. I'm taking you for this. We're going to surprise your parents for their anniversary and let's go and, and took her. But when she was walking, she was seen alone. 
so it doesn't really hold up. Some people don't even think that they actually saw Aisha, that that could have been someone else. But I'm not really sure what her parents think about that. I don't know. To me, I feel like kids who run away often come back. I don't think she just ran away forever. Uh, I don't think she just left and started a new life because she was only nine. I just, most kids would come back. So it, to me, it feels like foul play. Someone could have taken her. Someone could have done something to her. And it's really sad, but I think that's the most likely scenario. She also was reading this book in school. They were reading it to the whole class and it was about kids that like ran away and did all these cool adventures and stuff. It's just something that people have thrown out there that maybe she was inspired to run away by the book. Her mom was pretty shocked that she even left the house because she said Aisha was actually really scared of dogs. So if she's scared of dogs, like that, you know, is she gonna be brave enough to leave her house in the middle of the night? I don't know, there's just so much confusion. I really can't believe that no one called the police when they saw her just walking on the highway. Imagine what could be different if one person had called, you know? I mean, we've talked about the bystander effect in the past. Everyone always assumes someone else is gonna call and no one did. When they brought out search dogs, dogs couldn't even pick up her scent, which is odd because actually in the rain, uh, when there's more moisture, scents are actually more noticeable to dogs because there's moisture to carry the scent. I've seen people talk about this case and say like, well, the rain washed all the scents away, but that's actually not true at all. That first day that they were searching for her, they did find a mitten, but her mom said there was no way it was Aisha's. None of our winter supplies or gear is missing from our house. And then they had somewhat of a break in the case, um, February 17th, so a couple days after she went missing on the early hours of February 14th. There was actually this shed in the direction that she was seen running off into the woods. And in the shed, they found candy wrappers and a hair bow. And it was a Mickey Mouse shaped hair Bow. There was also a pencil and a pen found there as well. And they have confirmed that these belong to her. That leads us to believe she ran off the woods and ran into that shed. But that's really where the trail goes cold. There was like literally nothing for them to go off of. No answers, no leads. It was like, you know, really looking bleak. And then in August of 2001, so like about a year and a half later, they actually found her book bag. And it was actually found at a construction site, Barry. And the weird thing about it is it was wrapped in two trash bags. And it's so weird because if you were trying to get rid of evidence, like if someone did something to her and wanted to like get, make sure that, you know, the book bag was never found, why would you save it? Like whoever put that there literally put two trash bags around it to ensure that it wouldn't, you know, get damaged from the elements. It's almost like they wanted someone to find it. It's super, super weird. And it was found actually like 26 miles away from Shelby in an area near Morgan. And when they found the bag, it had several sets of clothes, it had her basketball uniform, and it also had pictures of her family. So that kind of leads us back to the running away idea because if you're leaving, I mean, most people would probably take pictures of their family. If she was a little older, like a teenager, the running away theory would really make sense to me. I think maybe she even ran away for good. But being nine years old, it's very, it seems very unlikely to me that she just ran away and is like off living another life. Maybe she really did run away, but maybe someone came in contact with her at some point and who knows what happened after that. So the FBI took the bag and ran tests on it. However, none of the information on those tests were ever released, so I don't know anything more about that. What is good is that in May of 2016, the FBI announced that they possibly have a new lead in the case, you know, some kind of fresh information, and they have asked the public to look for a car where multiple people think they witnessed Asia possibly getting into. They think that it was possibly a 1970s Lincoln Continental Mark IV, um, in dark green or possibly a Ford Thunderbird from around the same time and the police do say that they're receiving tips daily about it So maybe this will get solved who knows they could have a lot more information than what is on the internet right now Investigators believe Asia degree was abducted today her family are still hopeful. They'll see Asia again Cleveland no, County see. Sheriff who told us he could not go into detail, but said investigators are still making progress in this case. Her family has done everything they can to find her. I feel so badly for them. They've done some really good stuff since then though. They started a scholarship in her name. They have an annual walk that they do. So the community is very involved with it. Each year, Aisha's family returns to the very place she was last seen along Highway 18 in Cleveland County, where they've marked her memory with this sign. I just wish we could find her. And they don't walk alone, but instead are joined by neighbors, friends, and the Cleveland County Sheriff, who told us he could not go into detail, but said investigators are still making progress in this case. The main thing is to bring closure to this family. Or Captain Derwin Briscoe, who remembers working that day 17 years ago, 
when Aisha disappeared. They're you know, never gonna give up on their daughter. I think that's so amazing. And I was very inspired by their will to find her um, just to make this video and get the word out about her. If you do have any information on this case or you think you know something, no matter how small you think it is, please call it in to the Cleveland County Sheriff's Department. I will put their information in the description box. I really, really hope though that they get this figured out, that they can at least bring closure to the family even if they can't bring Aisha back, which I mean, it's possible that they could. So who knows, you know? Got keep hope alive and as her mother i just got enough faith in god that if he already had her soul that he would let us know so i don't believe she's dead i can just keep the hope that she's gonna walk through that door one day oh uh, we got his hope and i just refuse to let anybody take that away from me if you are inspired by Aisha's story and want to purchase the shirt for the Where Is campaign, like I said, 100% of the proceeds for that go to Thorn. Um, if you want to get yourself a sweet shirt and also give back. But I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments what your theories are, what your thoughts are on this. Like always, please share this video on your social media and stuff. Get Aisha's face out there. It's always helpful to spread awareness about these cases. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you are wanting to see more Where Is videos in the future. And that's it for me today guys. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.